This morning I woke up and wrote a letter for the doctor that put me in remission for my Hashimoto's. Every other doctor looked at me as a closed book with Hashimoto's at the title, but didn't even open it. They just said Hashimoto's was it. I wrote this letter this morning and I'm going to read it to you. Today I write this I am in, as I am in remission from Hashimoto's. Yes, you heard that correctly, I am in remission. I hope that with my life-saving doctor that I will stay that way. My journey with Hashimoto's began at the age of 16 years old when I was in a terrible car accident. Who knew that the physical trauma would affect my immune system forever? When I was in this accident, I also had mono, the Epstein-Barr virus, which caused my immune system to be very low and susceptible to infection. This opened the door for Hashimoto's and invited it into my body without me knowing. At first, the symptoms were masked by mono, but slowly I began to realize that there was something more going on. In the beginning, no one believed me. I was misdiagnosed several times with chronic fatigue syndrome and the occasional, I think you need to see a psychiatrist, which we've all heard that one before. These diagnoses were not accepted by me, so I called someone who I considered family at the time, who I knew owned the Harold Simmons Cancer Center at the University of Texas at Southwestern. And as soon as I told her what was going on, she told me to fly out and she would give me the help I needed. Three weeks later, I was on a plane to UT Southwestern in Dallas. I saw a hematologist, an oncologist, a gastroenterologist, infectious disease, and rheumatologist, and had several labs done as well as minor procedures to find the answer. One lab came back positive and changed my life forever. I had a positive ANA, anti-nuclear antigen. It meant I had some sort of autoimmune disease which no one would have thought in a million years would have been the answer. They proceeded to do some follow-up labs and decided I had late-stage Hashimoto's and told me I would never get better. They basically told me to learn to live with it and that eventually I should be alright. I slowly accepted this because I didn't know where else to turn and was happy that I at least had my answer of what was going on. At this point, I am 18 years old and still couldn't function like normal 18 year olds could. When I came home, I started seeing an endocrinologist named Dr. Joseph Matthews. I was terrified. I didn't know what to think and reading Hashimoto's online doesn't tell you how the diagnosis will be. My endocrinologist took one look at my labs and a second look at me and confirmed that I had late stage Hashimoto's. It basically meant that it was it had been going on for so long that there was no reversing it, or so I thought at the time. Hashimoto's affects every single organ system in your body and does irreversible damage which had sadly happened to me. Now on top of my autoimmune disease, I had to treat other health issues as well because with one antibody that I was likely born with had destroyed my body. I had a chronic illness that at the time I didn't know could basically be cured. I used to say my illness was like a life sentence without parole because I thought I would never be free from it. Fast forward to ages 18 to 21, I was treated solely for Hashimoto's with Synthroid and Cytomel. I felt better, but something was still wrong with my body. I still couldn't function and be the girl who loved life like she used to. I knew deep down something was wrong, and but doctors keep on blaming every symptom I had on Hashimoto's. As soon as I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's, doctors looked at me like a closed book with Hashimoto's at the title. They wouldn't even open this medical metaphorical book. They only looked at this as the title and thought they knew the whole story. Now, at 21 years old, I finally got a doctor to not only open my book, but read every single page and even in between the lines. This doctor is named Dr. William Weirs, who works for the Center for Occupational Environmental Medicine, also known as COEM, and I believe he gave me my life back. He looked at my labs and looked at me as a whole. He uses a concept called the total load, and he saw my load for what it was and all that I was carrying from infection to stress. He agreed with my diagnosis of Hashimoto's, but he was the first person to ever tell me that I could be put into remission from it with the proper treatment. This really got to me because I had never heard the word remission along with Hashimoto's in the same sentence. But it wasn't even something I dreamed of because I was always told it was never possible. He not only treated me for my Hashimoto's, but he gave me two other diagnoses that I had been waiting for my whole life. These diagnoses could have scared me, but from the moment I sat across from him at that table, when he metaphorically opened my book, I knew I was in good hands. He told me I had chronic Epstein-Barr virus, which was likely caused by the before-mentioned car accident, as well as adrenal fatigue. He gave me a list of supplements and medication to naturally treat these illnesses, and at first I was hesitant, but I had faith in a doctor for once, so I was going to trust his gut. Sure enough, now I'm living my better life, and that I have been able to live in five years. I can go out with my friends and not have to worry about feeling bad or explaining my illness to them. I could live without my symptoms constantly lurking in my body. Most of all, though, I could live, which is something that I hadn't been able to do in a long time. These illnesses knocked me down for over five years of my life. I experienced horrible anxiety and depression on top of everything else, but today I can say I'm happy and overall healthy young woman who is ready to live her life to the fullest, and I owe it all to Dr. William Weirs at the Center of Occupational Environmental Medicine, also known as COEM.